Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing new updates, new studies, and new discoveries in regards to the mysterious dark matter. The still somewhat hypothetical, I guess, substance or phenomenon that seems to be responsible for approximately 80% of visible matter in the universe that still doesn't have a very good explanation, but that most studies explain as very likely some kind of a particle. A particle that in theory seems to only interact with everything using gravity and nothing else. In other words, even though proton, neutron and electron are able to use all four fundamental forces, including the strong, the weak and the electromagnetic forces, these hypothetical dark matter particles seem to only do so through gravity and nothing else. And though it might sound unusual and potentially somewhat controversial, it's not actually without merit. Things like neutrinos, for example, which have been proposed back in 1930, but only discovered approximately 30 years later, do indeed interact with everything only using gravity, and in this case, the weak force, but not the strong force, and not electromagnetism. And because neutrinos are actually very difficult to detect, it's quite possible for another similar particle to exist that might be even more difficult to find. And in this case, we're actually going to be discussing one of these unusual neutrino particles that have also been proposed to be maybe an explanation of dark matter as well in one of the future videos about so-called cosmic neutrino background. But this video is going to be coming out a little bit later, so if you don't want to miss it, make sure to subscribe. But the main point is that these particles that are difficult to find definitely exist. And so because of this, quite a lot of scientists now believe that maybe just maybe dark matter is also one of these hypothetical particles. And there have been quite a lot of propositions of what exactly it could be. But so far, after decades of search, nothing has been discovered. Although in this case, we haven't really looked at everything. And some particles will be very, very difficult to find even using modern technology. But to some extent, there are, I guess, three main propositions. One of them is neutrinos that I've mentioned previously, but we'll be discussing this sometime later. Another one is what's known as WIMPs, weakly interacting massive particles, which could be imagined as these relatively massive particles, possibly more massive than anything else we know, but that don't actually interact with anything except for gravity, which in theory form these really large concentration fields or even halos around various galaxies, which could then explain what we're seeing around the universe with some studies even proposing that maybe these wimps could form things like planets, or these huge planetary objects formed entirely out of wimp dark matter particles. But at the moment this is still very hypothetical, and there is no evidence whatsoever. But the last proposition, and the one that we've discussed previously with videos in the description, is in regards to an unusual particle referred to as axion. Now the thing about axions is that in physics they actually have, technically, nothing to do with dark matter whatsoever. Decades ago, they were proposed by various physicists to explain an idea known as strong CP problem. It's a problem that tries to resolve some of the paradoxes of symmetry in the universe, but it would take a little bit too long to explain the details, so check out the video in the description if you want to learn more. The main point is that axions were proposed as a potential explanation for what we're actually seeing in the entire universe. Without axions as a potential particle, it's kind of difficult to actually explain why the universe and the particles in the universe are the way they are. So in that particular physical problem, axions have always been sort of the main explanation. But sometime in the past, someone proposed that, okay, well, maybe these axions can also explain another problem. Their physical parameters also might explain the existence of dark matter. And quite a lot of scientists started to agree with this over time. As a matter of fact, axions have become one of the main contenders for the dark matter explanation. But because their mass is predicted to be extremely low, their existence will be very, very difficult to prove. However, as you might have learned from some of the previous videos, there have been some potential signs for their existence from various observations across the universe, including various observations of very powerful radiation that might have actually been produced by axions. Once again, check out the description if you want to learn more. And so having said all of that, for the past few years, there have been quite a lot of studies trying to establish so exactly what should we be looking for, axions, wimps, neutrinos, or something else, if we wanted to actually discover the hypothetical dark matter. But obviously there are some other additional propositions that basically try to remove dark matter as a particle completely and explain the universe in some other ways. But at the moment, none of those explanations actually do a really good job. A lot of them seem to actually have quite a lot of paradoxes, and many of them are unable to explain the entire universe as well as the current model. We'll discuss some of those ideas in some of the future videos, but at the moment they are not really strong contenders. 
But now we have this new study that actually used this, that I'll explain to you in a second, to potentially once again confirm that dark matter might be axions after all. With another study even further confirming that dark matter actually seems to be particles and nothing else. In other words, we have these two separate studies released just weeks apart that once again confirm that dark matter is real and dark matter might be axions. And so let's discuss exactly what was found and how all of this was discovered. Starting with that confirmation that was recently released. And so this recent study essentially used some of the recent observations of what we refer to as CMB, cosmic microwave background, which of course looks like this and represents the oldest cosmic radiation or electromagnetic light from the entire universe. All of this was emitted toward us when the universe was only about 380,000 years old. And the thing is CMB inside of it contains a lot of additional information including things like polarization and even various frequency peaks and frequency trolls that essentially allow the scientists to study even further trying to identify exactly what all of this light passed through on the way toward planet Earth to some extent allowing them to basically create a more three-dimensional image. It's not a perfect image, but it's an overall representation of how exactly all of this light behaved as it traveled for 13.8 billion years. And so in this recent study, as the scientists were mapping all of this using state-of-the-art new models and new computer simulations, they were able to map a kind of a silhouette of all of the matter between us and basically the Big Bang itself with various large lumps of matter that most likely was made by dark matter itself. In other words, they were able to discover signs of what seems to be very large knots and bumps inside of this light, too massive and too dense to be anything but large chunks of dark matter itself. And to be more exact, they believe they are actually looking at some kind of a representation of the so-called cosmic web, the huge web-like structure stretching across the entire universe whose existence and foundation is believed to be the result of the dark matter interaction over time. And so it might resemble something like this. As the cosmic microwave background radiation traveled toward us, it passed through various knots and various web-like structures, resulting in certain patterns visible in the CMB. At least that's the best explanation we have right now for what the scientists discovered. With all this achieved using what's known as the Atacama Cosmology Telescope, which was active for approximately 15 years and was only decommissioned back in September of 2022. It's going to be replaced by a new telescope in 2024. But the data from this project allowed 160 scientists to essentially confirm one thing. The modern cosmology theories seem to be kind of correct, and they seem to suggest that dark matter is some kind of a particle forming the cosmic web. At least based on the observations from the cosmic microwave background, and based on the fact that we don't actually have a bad explanation that accounts for everything. And so that's the first study that was just released. And then we have that second study that sort of suggests that this particular particle might actually be an axion. And in this case, the study used something completely different. It used a variety of what's known as Einstein rings or gravitational lenses, such as the one that you see right here that was used in this study. These are of course various visual effects produced by gravitational phenomena when there's a really massive object in front of another object that's really bright. And so by looking at simulations of what it should look like if this is generated by certain types of dark matter, in the study the scientists were able to create hypothetical gravitational lenses if the massive object in front was made of different types of dark matter. For example, on the left we have the representation if this is some kind of a WIMP, really massive particle that some studies are trying to discover. On the right though, this is what we would see if this is some kind of an axion-like particle with a very small mass that instead of having some kind of a smooth distribution produces what's known as quantum interference and actually starts acting more like a wave than a particle. This quantum interference is sort of expected from really really small particles. And so by using these simulations and by using these predictions, they then compare this to the actual observations from various gravitational lenses. For example, we have the data for this massive elliptical galaxy, or technically a quasar, that contains several images of the active galaxy with a bright galactic core. And when the scientists compared the predicted observations to what we're actually seeing from this quasar, various distortions inside this image seem to be created by something that was actually more wave-like as opposed to particle-like. Or in other words, something that was experiencing quantum interference as opposed to producing smooth distribution. Implying, of course, that the effects from dark matter are not actually smooth at all, but instead represent a kind of a jagged edge and a lot of different distortions that take a wave-like appearance. With the observations from this particular galaxy implying that it's definitely an axion. But 
At the moment this is just one observation and one analysis of a single quasar. In order to make this official and in order to actually prove this, this would have to be done over and over and over again until there is no more doubt. And so a lot more investigations and a lot more analysis is first required. But if the scientists in this case are correct, it might suggest that dark matter is basically light axions, extremely light axions. So light as a matter of fact that we might never be able to see them from planet Earth by using any kind of technology. Their total energy would be something like 10 to the power of minus 22 electron volts, lighter than any particle known to us. But because there are so many of them, at least hypothetically, it means that they represent approximately 80% of all matter in the entire universe, at least according to these explanations. And though the actual suggestions right now are pretty strong, as always, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So we definitely have to have more studies before any of this is officially proven. Nevertheless, these are pretty exciting discoveries and once again confirm that so far our understanding of the universe seems to be more or less correct. But once there's something else discovered about this particular quasar or there are additional observations of dark matter from somewhere else, at least for now, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.